In this episode, we're going to talk about some toys I wish I still had from when I was a kid. So, stick around. Dorks and Dorkettes, and welcome to Nostalgia Syndrome. My name's Rob, and we are going to talk about some toys I wish I still had from when I was a kid. Now, what differs from this show to the other one of toys I wish I had as a kid is that these are toys that I actually did own, that I don't have anymore due to time, breakage, yard sales, donations, just parental... Dicketry, what have you. These are those toys that you think about on a quiet night when everything's calm and you don't have a care in the world until you start remembering that one certain toy that you just wish you still had sitting on your shelf or and in some cases just in storage but somewhere where you can actually pick it up and look at it and enjoy it again. These are toys that are long gone. Some of them, I remember where they went. Other ones, I have no idea. But, without further ado, let's get to the list. Number one is a toy that is probably one of my first memories of a toy that I can recount. And that is the Weeble Circus. Released by Hasbro in 1977, the Weeble Circus was one of my most favorite and treasured toys growing up. I would have been one when it came out, but I have such vivid memories of it that I probably got it through the Goodwill or a yard sale or something that I had it when I was a little bit older. Um, but the things I loved about this were the actual circus itself, which folded out, and it had a lot of neat things like a cannon that shot and a little trampoline. You know what? I actually found the commercial for this from 1977, so let's take a look at it. Imagine going to the Weeble Circus, good fun all around. Right over there is Wobbles Weeble, he's the circus clown. There's the Weeble and the flying turkeys, she falls off, easy as you please. Out of the cannon shoots Wobbles the clown. Weebles wobble, but they don't fall down. Imagine going to the Weeble Circus when Weeble Circus is in town. Weeble Circus comes with everything you see here, new from Romper Room, some assembly required. Wasn't that awesome? That is just a neat little time machine into the late 70s. Um, I love that font. I think that's awesome for the Weeble Circus. Um, of all the things, I still have the little clown Weeble. And this might sound really weird, and maybe you guys and gals remember this, but... Even though the little trapeze artist is a female figure, doesn't it look like Gunther Gable? Do you remember him from uh, Ringling Brothers, the, the badass lion tamer guy? Yeah, actually that was the first poster I ever had hanging in my room was a poster of him with like a leopard over his shoulders. Just looking totally awesome. Anyway, now my Weeble Circus uh, was put up at a yard sale and it didn't sell. It was put up at another yard sale and still didn't sell. And it ended up just sitting in my parents' shed for future yard sales but never made it out. It was later just thrown in the trash and just saying that out loud really hurts my soul. Anyway, to number two. Number two on the list is Thunderhawk from the Mask toy line. Released in 1985 by Kenner, Mask is just one of those toy lines I wish I still had. Every one of them. And I didn't have that many, so I would love to come across more of them one day and get them into my collection. But... Getting Thunderhawk, I got him for Christmas, and he came with Matt Tracker, the leader of the Mask team. And I have to say, it's probably one of the first times that I got, like, the numero uno toy character thing ever. Usually I get a little sideline, little cheapy dude off to the side that 
you know, is still awesome, but wasn't the leader. This was the one time I remember getting the leader. And I remember getting this one. I didn't really know what Mask was. It was still fairly new. And it was just awesome. It's a toy line that I'm surprised has not been revived. Because what kid doesn't want a car or a big rig or a motorcycle that turns into something else. I mean, Transformers has been going strong for 30 plus years now. I mean, Mask should have been sailing on the same type of um, success. Now, with Thunderhawk, you got this red Camaro, I believe. I'm not a car guy, so please forgive me. But it had those flip-up wing doors, no pun intended, that would then transform out just a little bit more to become wing wings that it could fly. Very simple transformation. And a while ago in an episode I talked about how my son has little matchbox that the doors would flip open like that and he would pretend to be flying around the house unprompted just with his imagination. So that's why I always thought it was a no-brainer for them to bring Mask back. Now, I don't remember what happened to this toy. Again, it was one that was lost to time, probably donated by my parents without my knowledge, but man, I would love to still have one. Number three is from a toy line that I actually had a good number of, and that is the Rambo Freedom Fighters toy line from Coleco. Now, I could list off a couple different characters that I wish I had, and I probably will one day. But right now, we're going to talk about the villain, Mad Dog. Sporting an orange mohawk and a whip, the feature that I just thought was totally awesome about Mad Dog was his backpack with flip-out shotgun. I don't know what it was at that time. Maybe it was the movie Aliens, where you had Hicks with his sawed-off shotgun. I don't know, but just the whole thing of a sawed-off shotgun flinging up into this dude's hand was revolutionary and awesome to me at the time. And the fact he came with a bullwhip. I mean, what kid didn't want a bullwhip after Indiana Jones? I mean, really. So any toy with a whip, number one in my book. Again, this is a toy I don't know what happened to. Probably donated probably just cast aside by my parents because I was too old or whatever. But man, the Rambo toys, I actually had a fair amount of them. And I don't remember why I did. I mean, I loved them. I thought they were awesome. But I was one not to have that many of one toy line. One of the perks, I guess you could say, of growing up poor. You just got whatever you got. But this was one that I actually had... A few of. Everything from Rambo, Nomad, to Mad Dog. But Mad Dog was one that really stood out to me as being super awesome. Now number four is probably a vehicle that would end up on people's most lamest vehicle lists. But to me, it was one of my favorites because I did not have many Star Wars vehicles. And that is the Cloud Car from Empire Strikes Back. Released by Kenner in 1981, actually, the cloud car was big enough to accommodate two different figures, just like in the movie. It had two characters flying around in it, and it had these awesome um, landing gear things that would pop out that it could stand up. I mean, it was awesome, and it fit all of my figures. I mean, not all my figures, but all of the three and three quarter scale figures. I would put G.I. Joe figures in there my Star Wars figures in there, and just hold it in the middle and go flying around the house with it. And I would have such a ball. I mean, I wish I knew where half of my Star Wars stuff ended up. Yet again, probably yard sale, donated, what have you. But not here, not in the laundry room. Should be right there, should be right there, should be somewhere. But it's gone. And, again, this is probably one that people think is one of the lamest vehicles. But since I didn't have many Star Wars toys in general, I love the cloud car. I even love the little cloud car pilot, dude. That's a fair figure that I 
miss dearly that I would love to get again. Maybe it's not that expensive because it's deemed lame, you know, the little Bespin guy. But, oh man, love that thing. Would zoom around the house all day long playing with it. Now number five is a big one that I regret not having. I, I can't even say how I don't have it anymore. I actually had two of them at one time, and both of them are gone. And it's probably because he ended up naked more than anything. Don't judge. But that is the 12-inch Mr. T figure, made by Galoob in 1983. This big 12-inch figure was not attached to A-Team. It was just Mr. T, the man himself. Decked out with gold chains, he even had a handkerchief in his back pocket, and was totally awesome. In my play world, him and Tilo were actually an item, but he was still friends with He-Man. You know, He-Man, he was cool, he didn't take it personal. But like I said, it had removable clothing, and for some reason, I would always take it off of him and try to put it on some of my other figures. So, more than not... I would never put it back on him a lot of times and just throw him back in the toy box naked. Maybe that was the reason my parents got rid of it. They just didn't want a naked Mr. T running around the house. But he wasn't truly naked because his, you know, his chucks and his uh, work socks were still on at all times. So you can't technically say he was naked. He just didn't have pants or a shirt on. Yeah, there we go. Anyway, that was just a quick look at five toys that I wish I still had from when I was a kid. What were some toys that you wish you still had? What were some really gnarly situations that you don't have them anymore? In the future, when I do some more of these episodes, I will have to admit some really heinous acts that I did on toys to why I don't have them anymore that I still regret dearly to this day. Now, I'm not ready to purge my soul to that extent yet, but sooner or later we'll get to that. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please give me a thumbs up. If you got something to say, please leave a comment. I love reading them and I love getting back to everybody. And if you're new around here and you enjoyed this or any of the episodes that YouTube is recommending down here, please hit subscribe. And if you hit that little bell icon, you'll be notified whenever there's a new episode. So until next time, thanks for watching. Keep being rad and stay dorky.